Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're going to talk about a few things, as we often do, but this one will be mostly relating to motherboard VRMs, and as you've no doubt guessed by the thumbnail and the title, prompting this content was a recent Tom's Hardware review, where they said and claimed a few things, a few rather strange things, uh, that we ultimately didn't agree with. And admittedly, that alone doesn't really require a dedicated video or response on our behalf, but as I said, there are a few things we'd like to discuss surrounding this topic, so here we are. But before getting to those more recent developments, let's just take a step back a little bit and talk about the motherboard in question, or rather the MSI motherboards in question, hot off the release of their highly successful B450 range, namely the Tomahawk and Pro Carbon, many were anticipating the arrival of MSI's X570 lineup, us included. However, after checking out the X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, the X570 Gaming Plus, and the X570A Pro at Computex last year, we were pretty underwhelmed with the VRM configuration, especially when compared to what we saw from the likes of Gigabyte and ASUS, for example. And keep in mind, MSI did sponsor our trip to Taiwan last year and the year before, and I think the year before that as well. Anyway, following the trade show, we eventually got our hands on pretty much every X570 motherboard there was and began testing. The first round of testing included the most expensive X570 boards, and from MSI, things looked pretty good. The Godlike was one of the best performing extreme X570 boards when it came to VRM thermals. Then for the second wave of testing, things got interesting, and for many, a little depressing. The MSI X570-A Pro was, well, not really any other way to put this, it was a disaster. The board hit 115 degrees and was right on the edge of throttling when using a stock Ryzen 9 3900X. Meanwhile, competing boards such as the ASUS Prime X570-P peaked at just 66 degrees and that meant the MSI board was running almost 50 degrees hotter an insane difference that left us baffled by just how much MSI had messed up here. I then later found this was also an issue for the much more expensive MSI X570 Gaming Edge before eventually stumbling upon probably the worst board we've ever tested, the X570 Pro Carbon. Now, a lot of time did go into explaining the results and talking about various use cases and test setups and things like that in the conclusions of those videos. So if you want to learn a lot more about all of that, I do suggest watching those because as I said, yeah, there's just a lot more information than we're going to skip over it here just to get to the point what we want to talk about. But on the surface, the test configuration for testing the X570 motherboards did seem quite extreme. Open test bench with no direct airflow. And in a way it was quite extreme, but I don't think it was unrealistic. The boards were tested, as I said, on an open test bench with no direct airflow, and usually I also test inside a system with good airflow, but since at the time I thought it would be necessary to redo all the testing all over again once the 3950X was released, and it is very time consuming to test this many boards, I just didn't bother with that. The advantage of the open test bench is, in a way, airflow even though there's no active fans. And this is because the boards are tested in an air conditioned room that's maintained at 21 degrees. So the results can be much more favorable than what you might find in a poorly ventilated case or perhaps even a well ventilated case in a much hotter environment, which believe me, they exist and PCs do have to deal with them. Also, if you're buying a motherboard for any amount of money, really, you wanna know if you're getting the best quality product available for your money. So in the case of the MSI X570A Pro and ASUS Prime X570P, both boards cost basically the same amount, offer similar features, but one was worlds better in terms of VRM performance, and that's not something you can upgrade. You, you can't simply upgrade the VRM, so you, you're stuck with whatever you get. In the end, I concluded that all MSI X570 boards priced below the ACE should be avoided, as there are multiple better options that offer considerably better VRMs. And this was bad news for MSI, as it had the potential to greatly impact their sales, and I've since been told it did exactly that. So when releasing content that can hurt a company's performance, their sales performance, we wanna make sure that we're right. And above all else, we don't want to mislead our viewers. So it's important to us that the information we're feeding you is accurate. So before publishing any of our findings, we contacted MSI with the bad news and asked if they cared to dispute the findings and could provide any feedback. Perhaps there was some sort of BIOS update coming that corrected the situation. 
We weren't sure, so that's why we reached out. After a bit of back and forth with MSI, they wanted to replicate our test conditions, so they went and did that, and before too long, they reported back that they were able to replicate our results, so they didn't wish to challenge the content. They were disappointed with the findings, but ultimately, they had to accept them. And I should really emphasize that MSI really was amazing about all of this. They flew the head of their motherboard department to Melbourne just to meet with me and discuss a number of things relating to their motherboards. And then to my complete surprise, gave me a world exclusive look at step one of the do-over, the X570 Unify, which turned out to be a really great board. So it is important to note that MSI handled the criticism very well and appeared genuinely concerned with the current lineup and made it clear that they were committed to improving future products. So hats off to MSI, I really can't speak highly enough of the people involved with the company. Now, since publishing my findings, we've seen a few other independent media outlets publish similar findings. Another great bunch of people can be found over at KitGuru. Luke Hill published an X570 Varum temperature analysis back in October, and he found very similar results to us. The MSI X570 Gaming Edge peaked at over 100 degrees, while competing boards from Gigabyte and Asus didn't even nudge 70 degrees. Also like me, they tested with a Ryzen 9 3900X processor, it really does make sense to test a motherboard donning a flagship chipset with a flagship processor, and back then that was the 3900X. Another great resource for X570 motherboard testing is Hardware Info, and they managed to test 25 X570 motherboards, so amazing work there. They also used the Ryzen 9 3900X, this time overclocked to 4.1 GHz with 1.3 volts, and guess what? They too found horrible results with the MSI boards priced below the ACE. The Gaming Pro Carbon, which was one of the worst boards MSI has produced in a long time, hit 109 degrees, and at that point the board started to throttle the processor. So, with multiple trusted and reliable sources all reporting poor VRM thermal performance on mid-range to entry-level MSI X570 motherboards, it was no wonder MSI decided not to fight this one. Now that we've established all that, let's talk about Tom's hardware. Normally, I wouldn't bother addressing something like this, uh, despite how frustrating the misinformation is when we're trying to create our own VRM testing content, I just, just would have left it alone, and you know, if anyone had any questions as to why their results were so much better than ours, we would just have to address that as those questions come in. But in a way, Tom's Hardware really is calling out our results, and the results of other media outlets just mentioned, and they're doing so with terribly flawed testing. Last week, Tom's Hardware reviewed the MSI X570 Gaming Plus after allegedly purchasing it to see how bad the VRM performance was, with the expectation that they'd crap all over the product. So that's their story. However, once you get to the VRM temperature testing, they said the following. Our tests dispel the popular belief that MSI has hot voltage regulators after getting even lower readings than this from an infrared thermometer. We loaded hardware info to make sure that the hot parts weren't simply being hidden from our sensor. This is the highest temperature we could find at stock clocks, and it even stayed below 90 degrees Celsius through our overclocking stress tests. So that's strange. They're saying in a 21 degree room, the Gaming Plus will run at around 54 degrees, about half as hot as what we and others have already reported, so that doesn't seem possible. It's still unclear on exactly how they tested these boards. The graph says Prime 95 all threads, but which mode they used isn't stated, and more crucially, how long the test ran for. So we use an AVX accelerated blender workload, so a real world application using a real world workload, and we run that on a loop for an hour. It also doesn't say which processor they are using, and that information really isn't that clear, though in the BIOS section, they one time mentioned the Ryzen 7 3700X, and you can see that this is the processor used when looking at the BIOS screenshots. They also have since confirmed that that was the processor used in the comment section. So this means to dispel the popular belief that MSI's X570 motherboards have hot voltage regulators, they're using a 65 watt processor, the Ryzen 7 3700X, which uses about as much power as the Ryzen 5 2600, and you wouldn't use the 2600 to stress test a B450 motherboard, let alone an X570 board. So that in my opinion is a deeply flawed test method that makes absolutely no sense, but gets even better. 
The Tom's Hardware author went on to say, most buyers in the sub $200 motherboard market will never upgrade to the Ryzen 9 3950X and few will even jump to the 3900X. And hardly any buyers would expect boards in this price class to overclock those processors. When you're mostly after the basics in an X570 board, so you can spend more on the processor or other components, the MPG X570 Gaming Plus is easy to recommend. So <laughs> where do I even start with that? I guess let's get your opinion. And we did just that by creating a poll on our community tab and over 30,000 of you took part. I simply asked the question, if you were to buy an AMD X570 motherboard today with a 65 watt CPU, say the Ryzen 5 3600, would you consider or plan on upgrading to a Ryzen 9 3900X or 3950X in a few years time when they're much cheaper? Almost 80% of you said yes. And I suspect the real number would be even higher as a few people were confused by the question and they said they would probably only upgrade to a higher end Ryzen 4000 series part, which is fair enough because the poll was asking about the 3900 and 3900X, but really we were sort of asking about 105 watt or higher TDP parts. I probably should have made that a bit clearer. Doesn't matter. The poll still confirmed our suspicions, let's say. And the poll does at the very least suggests that Tom's Hardware is out of touch with their audience and have based their entire testing on an incorrect assumption. They're also essentially saying, because this is a sub $200 motherboard, it's unreasonable or unrealistic to expect it to work with higher end CPUs, especially if you wanna overclock. And I think it's important to note that the Gaming Plus was a $200 motherboard when it was released and MSI only discounted it to the $170 US price point when we pretty much exposed it to be a garbage motherboard. And even at $170, it's not really a cheap motherboard, is it? We're not talking about an entry level $70 B450 board here. We're talking about a $170 US motherboard using a flagship chipset. And has Tom's Hardware forgotten the fact that MSI does officially list support for the 3900X and 3950X on these motherboards. So at the very least, that must mean Tom's is saying MSI has gotten their own spec wrong and is falsely advertising these boards to support processes that they really don't, or at least shouldn't, according to Tom's Hardware. And then even more bizarrely, they say, when you're mostly after the basics in an X570 board, so you can spend more on the processor or other components, the MPG X570 Gaming Plus is easy to recommend. So how much do you want to spend on the processor? Perhaps you need 12 cores and you want the 3900X. That's what you're doing with the money you save. You Exactly what Tom's Hardware suggests, you're buying a better processor, but you don't need 10 gigabit LAN or any of the other expensive features found on higher end X570 boards. If that's the case, then why the hell aren't Tom's Hardware testing these boards with the 3900X and concluding that you're much better off with an ASUS or Gigabyte X570 motherboard. They seem to think there's something special about the Gaming Plus because it costs $170, but they've somehow not realized that there is a non-Wi-Fi version of the ASUS Tough X570, which also costs $170. Well, they said this, if we instead consider its $25 saving when compared to the Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, we could just as easily say it has around $25 less worth. You could be paying for the more expensive boards, even larger CPU voltage regulator and onboard Wi-Fi controller, or perhaps you don't need those things. Yeah, or you could just get the base model tough, which costs $25 US less. It drops the Wi-Fi support, but it keeps the even larger CPU voltage regulator. And at that point, why are we still talking about the MSI Gaming Plus? And as we've said numerous times in the past, one of the biggest draw cards of the AM4 platform has always been its broad compatibility. For example, if you bought a good quality B350 motherboard three years ago now with say a Ryzen 5 1600, you could drop in a 3900X and get quite a significant upgrade without having to change your motherboard. It's a hundred odd dollars you don't have to spend, in this case $170. Or for a more cost-effective upgrade right now, you could get a Ryzen 7 2700X, a few extra cores, IPC improvement, and you can do that for under $200. In fact, they're selling for $170 right now. So coincidentally, the same price as the crappy Gaming Plus motherboard. 
But Tom's Hardware is claiming no one ever does this. No one will ever buy an entry-level X570 motherboard and then look to slot in a cheap 3900X or 3950X processor in a few years' time. Instead, they'll buy a brand new motherboard supporting the same socket and then make the CPU upgrade. What kind of logic is that? At this point, we're really not sure why they're going so far out of their way to try and sell you an MSI X570 motherboard. Just doesn't seem to make any sense. So that being the case, I attempted to reach out to the author so we could touch base, have a private chat about all this, discuss the poll results and a few other things. I know an ex Tom's Harbor employee, and since there appears to be no easy way to contact individual authors, I asked if he was still in contact with them and if it was possible to arrange a quick chat with them. Uh, he reached out to Thomas, the author of the review we're talking about, and I guess, well, in a way, he basically said no, claiming, and this is, this is a doozy, he started off by claiming we're liars and then finished by saying we're trolls. So... I guess that's one way to avoid contending with, with someone challenging your work, is just, just to flat out call them liars and trolls. He also said a lot of other strange things in his reply, which at this point you're probably not finding too hard to believe, and he more than once contradicted himself. So yeah, interesting reply. I'm not gonna pick the entire reply apart. There's not much point really. The intention was to see if we could touch base with them, understand their position a bit better perhaps, and inform them of our poll and discuss the results there and see if we could work something out. But yeah, anyway, there is one paragraph though that let's just quickly go over that and discuss it. Now, here's the real kicker. MSI would not send us this board. We thought that they might be trying to hide something, and since their lack of response lent credence to stories about overheated voltage regulators, we bought one ourselves. I plan to turn the review into a expose on MSI. We instead exposed that those rumors were not to be entirely trusted. So he's saying our reviews were rumors and not to be trusted. And again, he proves all this by using a 65 watt TDP processor and not one of the 105 watt models that the boards do officially support. Are all the writers at Tom's Hardware really this incompetent or do they perhaps have an agenda? I really do have to wonder at this point. A few sharp readers can be seen questioning some of the decisions made in the review in the comments section, and the editor, Crashman, who I think is Thomas, the author, came back with some replies. And one of the replies from Crashman caught my attention. When quizzed about the test system and the conditions, he replied with a photo of the test system used, and funnily enough, it is very similar to our test bench, our open test bench. He uses the old Cooler Master half XB Evo case, but with the top and front panels removed. The front mounted rad looks to be sucking air away from the system. Again, not dissimilar to our setup. Therefore, Thomas isn't really testing in a case with direct airflow like he claimed originally, but instead more of a test bench setup. Throw in a rear mounted 120mm fan and then put the case panels back on and those VRM temps will likely spike by at least 20 degrees and that's assuming a cool room. He also doesn't use K-type thermocouples to measure VRM temps, instead opts for yet another flawed test method by employing an infrared meter and readouts in hardware info. So basically the temps he's reporting with the IR meter are surface temps of the heat sink or maybe the chokes, but given how low they are, I doubt it's choke temperatures. And MSI could have very easily changed the hardware info reporting to avoid concerned users when viewing higher temps. We know, for example, ASUS has pulled similar moves in the past. So, Tom's Hardware has, in their own words, dispelled the popular belief that MSI's X570 motherboards have hot voltage regulators. And once again, I'll remind you they've done this using a 65 watt CPU in an almost best case scenario pun kind of intended there. They used the wrong tools for the job in more ways than one, and we really have no idea how long the stress test was even run for. But these are quite clearly the guys to clear MSI's name, and of course the reputation of their X570 motherboards. As a late addition to this video, I went back and had a look at the other X570 boards Tom's Hardware have tested. It turns out Thomas has also reviewed the ASRock X570 Type-G, a flagship X570 board that retails for almost $300 US. In fact, I think it did at the time. And yet they also tested this rather expensive motherboard with the 65 watt 3700X. 
So I wonder how much you have to spend on a motherboard before the 3900X becomes a viable option. That aside though, what I found most interesting were the VRM thermal results. Using the same CPU, and as far as I can tell, the same test method, Tom's hardware is claiming that the Tai Chi runs two degrees hotter than the MSI X570 Gaming Plus. They're also claiming that the ASUS TUF runs cooler than the Gigabyte Aorus Master. So what exactly is going on here? I'm honestly not sure if there is a difference between these two configurations. There could very well be, but at the very least, the way they've presented this data is very easy to misunderstand, very misleading stuff. They should probably provide a lot more information in the graphs and below. Also, just to be clear, we would have never made this video if Tom's Hardware was willing to have a discussion about the issue and perhaps walk back some of their comments about dispelling MSI's hot X570 boards. They should also probably reconsider their position on users pairing entry-level X570 boards with 3900X and 3950X CPUs. At the very least, their position is short-sighted. Even if the poll resulted in a 50-50 a split, that's still half their audience that they're in opposition with. And the reality is it's almost 80%. So I think they really do need to rethink things and probably quite a few things, to be honest. On a final note, I should just point out that we have received feedback from quite literally dozens upon dozens of viewers at this point who have purchased an MSI X570 motherboard below the ACE and have confirmed our findings when running core heavy applications for extended periods of time. Nothing unrealistic, like 30 minutes or longer, an all core workload for that kind of period with a 3900X or 3950X does cause problems. Even some of the 3800X owners have complained about VRM temps and these are real user reports. Some of our Patreon members, people that we've spoken with and we've known them for quite some time now, some of them jumped the gun. They bought the Gaming Plus or the Gaming Edge X570 boards because of how good the MSI B450 boards were and they ended up very disappointed with the results when they started looking into these things. So. It's not just us that are reporting poor thermals. As I said, there's some other sources, but we're also getting user reports. So people who have bought these boards are now very unhappy with what they're finding. So yeah, again, Tom's Hardware may want to speak to actual people who have bought these boards and see A, what CPU they're running on them and maybe B, what their results are because a lot of people are running into CPU throttling. And again, these are issues that have been reported on our private Discord server. Anyway, I think we've covered this one as well as we need to at this point. I don't expect Tom's Hardware to make any changes since we're liars and trolls, but I just wanted to bring this to your attention for when we do future content and you know perhaps we'll find whatever we find in the future. There'll obviously be other testing to come when there's new chipsets and whatnot. We'll be buying as many boards as we can for both Intel and AMD parts. And I just wanted to make sure that yeah, people weren't comparing our results with those of lower end CPUs that don't really stress the boards properly. Anyway, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. We have Patreon, the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, all that. And yeah, that's really just gonna do it for this one. So thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.